This is the Flint 3 from GLINet, a Wi-Fi 7 router that in theory should have enough sauce to live at the heart of your home network. Does it though? Well, I've done plenty of videos on this channel covering GLINet routers. Those were all travel routers designed to be compact and have just enough features to get you by when you're away from your home. But surely that will carry over into the home lab, right? Let's talk about it. All right, let's just get the specs out of the way and I'm gonna put this back here, I guess. The Flint 3 is a tri-band Wi-Fi 7 router that boasts nearly 10 gigabit of throughput across all three bands with 5,700 megabit per second on the six gigahertz band. We get five 2.5 gig ports, one dedicated WAN, one LAN WAN combo meal, and three LAN. We also have a USB 3 port that has some cool features, more on that in a bit. Powering this device is a quad-core Qualcomm ARM chip with one gigabyte of DDR4 RAM and six gigabytes of eMMC. Looks wise, it reminds me of an old Netgear router from like five to 10 years ago. Not really complaining about that. Realistically, the only things most people care about in terms of hardware with an all-in-one device like this are the speed and quantity of the ports and the speed or type of the Wi-Fi. The rest really comes down to the software, so how about we just get into that? So all the routers in the GLINet lineup run a skinned version of OpenWRT, and anyone who's seen my videos knows I'm a huge fan of it. But like I mentioned, I've always approached it from a travel router perspective. This time we are approaching it like this is going to be our main gateway router in our home. Right off the bat, we have to talk about the initial setup. It's honestly pretty solid. It immediately makes you set up a new admin password, then lets you assign an SSID for each of the Wi-Fi bands. It even gives you nice little QR codes to easily connect on a mobile device. These are accessible later if you need them. Then after prompting me to update the firmware, it asked me which mode I'd like the device to run in and you get your standard ethernet mode, repeater mode to work off of a wireless connection and tether mode for a USB hotspot. Most people, including myself, are going to pick the ethernet mode. Immediately after that, it asked me if I wanted to set up a VPN. I like that. And the VPN setup is actually pretty awesome. They have the option to choose from a bunch of popular ones out there. And luckily for me, my go-to option PIA is listed. After entering your credentials, it lets you pick a profile based on the available ones your VPN provides and all you have to do is select one. And boom, you have a VPN client set up. I was surprised to see it was a WireGuard connection because I always thought PIA was only OpenVPN, the more you know. If this is turned on, your traffic will be routed through that VPN, which I assume is what you wanted. The main dashboard here will be familiar if you've used any GLINet product. And if you haven't, then take a gander here. It's pretty nice. It shows some info about what WAN connections you're using, how many clients are connected, the apps that are active, which Wi-Fi bands are in use, and just some other general information. The first thing I want to explore is the WAN connection, which they don't really have a dedicated page for, but they do have a multi-WAN page, which contains a pretty useful feature. Can you guess it? Yeah, it's for configuring multi-WAN setup. You guys are so smart. And here you can choose between both ethernet ports, repeater, and tethering. In a home setup, you're probably just gonna use the two ethernet connections, but I do love the tethering feature in here as well. You can take any phone that allows tethering, connect it to the router via the USB port, and use your mobile network as a WAN connection. This could be extremely useful during a random internet outage since your entire network, even the wired connections, would still function all off of your phone network. The ethernet ports are configurable as well in the UI if you want to manually toggle them between a WAN connection and a LAN. You can also choose the multi-WAN type whether you want failover or load balancing. Failover for configuring a primary and backup and load balance for if you want to use them all at the same time and you can adjust the ratio here as well. Some of you may not care about this but I think in a home setup this is an important feature to have. If you're looking to change the DNS server, you can find that in the DNS section and it's pretty basic, just set the servers you want to use. It is kind of cool that they include a list of popular options though. There's also some other configuration options for more specific use cases like the ability for your custom DNS to override the VPN DNS if you're about that life. Next, let's take a look at another important feature, your LAN. Again, some pretty standard options in here like setting the router's IP address, subnet, DHCP options, DNS, all that kinds of stuff. Then at the bottom, you can do your DHCP reservations for static IPs. It's easy enough to set one up, but I do wish it also allows you to set up a custom DNS record here as well. 
What you don't see here, though, is the ability to add another land, which means, yeah, no VLANs. That is honestly a deal breaker for me, full stop. In my home lab, I need the ability to have multiple VLANs to segregate my network for organization and for security purposes. Apparently, you can technically set up VLANs in Lucy, which is an OpenWRT configuration page, but it's a huge pain. Like, why not just natively support it in the UI? They kind of give you a VLAN with the guest network, but this is only for Wi-Fi, and there isn't really much you can configure here. It's a standard guest network with the ability to prevent clients from communicating with each other. And speaking of Wi-Fi, we do get the ability to configure each of the three bands individually along with their guest counterpart. You have the common stuff in here like name, security, protocol, bandwidth, and channel. I do find it kind of weird that they have a dedicated MLO SSID too, but it's not on by default. As far as I could tell, there was no prompt to turn this on. Considering MLO is a huge feature of Wi-Fi 7, I'd expect them to want you to use it. For those of you that don't know, MLO basically takes all of your Wi-Fi bands and aggregates them instead of making you choose which one you want to use. Performance-wise, it's fine. I tested the MLO on my iPhone 16 Pro and got around 600 megabits per second, which, I mean, isn't quite what I'd expect given that I've gotten over one gig with the same test on my Unify access point. But I really don't want to go into all of that because Wi-Fi is such a complicated beast when it comes to performance and testing. So let's move on to some more important stuff, NAT and port forwarding. When you open the NAT settings, you really won't see much. I guess some network UIs treat NAT settings differently, but if you're looking to open and forward ports, you'll do that in different sections. Port forwarding is in, well, the port forwarding section. And here you can also set DMZ settings too. The port forwarding is pretty basic and there really isn't anything wrong with that. Most of the time, it doesn't need to be anything too crazy. We can set the external interface and port, then we can set the internal interface and port. I do like that they include the VPN connection as an interface here because that would be a big problem for people self-hosting while also running a VPN. I actually really like the little visual it gives you when you create a rule too. Something about just being able to see the rule in this little diagram makes it feel more digestible, especially if you start adding more. Navigating to the client section will give us a list of our clients with a couple of options like the ability to change name, icon, block the device, and just see some statistics. I do kind of wish you had the ability to set up a static IP from this screen though. But now I want to move on to what I'll call additional features. Things outside your vanilla router stuff. The first is going to be more VPNs. I noticed something called Astro Warp, which looks to be GLINet's own custom site-to-site -site VPN solution specifically designed for their devices. I checked out the site and honestly, it looks like a Tailscale clone. It might be worth checking out in another video if you guys are interested, but the funny thing is that GLINet also includes the ability to run Tailscale natively. So like, it's kind of weird. I'm legit writing this script right now thinking I should do a video or a live stream comparing them. What do you guys think? Oh, and you even have zero tier here as well, so this thing is loaded with VPN options. Next, we have parental controls, which apparently can't be used if you have network acceleration turned on for some reason, so I turned that off to see what it was all about. I will say it's not super intuitive, but maybe I'm just a dumb millennial or something. You essentially create a group of devices, then choose when they're allowed to use the internet and what sites they can see, I, I guess. I don't know, my oldest kid is two, so it'll be a few more years before I'm worried about this. There's also an option to use Bark, but apparently that's a paid thing, so I nope the hell out of there. Moving on to another native third-party tool is AdGuard. It's essentially the same thing as Piehole, if you're familiar with that. If you're not, then AdGuard is a tool that lets you automatically block ads and specific web pages, as well as give you more flexibility with your custom DNS settings. I've tried both this and Piehole, and while I do think they're both great at what they do, I don't personally run them in my network. I just don't have the need for these features outside of what my Unify network can do. You also get some DDNS settings in here, or dynamic DNS, which roughly translates to being able to access my network from a domain even if my IP address changes. GeoINet hosts their own provider, and it would probably work if my test setup here wasn't double natted, but I mean, it's a pretty awesome feature that you get for free. If you're asking what you'd even use this for, just think if you're self-hosting and want to access your services, but don't want to pay for a domain name. Boom. A feature we're seeing pretty commonly these days with network solutions is the ability to manage them remotely via the cloud. 
If that tickles your pickle, you'll be happy to know that we can do that here with something they call Good Cloud. After creating an account, you'll be able to access all of your GLINet routers remotely and make some basic changes. It's definitely not on the level of something like Unify Network or Omada, but I mean, for most people, it's plenty. The last thing I want to cover is the add-ons. This is basically a package manager where you can install all kinds of stuff. And at the end of the day, this device is just a computer running OpenWRT, which is a Linux-based operating system. In my last video, I showed how you can use this to install Docker and even run Plex directly on your router. It's actually really awesome and is something pretty unique from other popular network solutions out there. Oh yeah, I lied. One more thing, you can also connect an external storage device to the USB port and host that storage over the network, effectively turning this router into a NAS. I showed that in the last video too. Okay, now I'm done for real. I know this was a bit long and I know I didn't go too in depth with certain topics, but I just wanted to show enough to support my final conclusion on whether I think this can be your main router in your home lab. And that answer is, well, no, let me explain. I do think GLINet makes awesome devices and has awesome software, but it's not really for the home user just yet. I think they've captured the travel router market and they're well known in the home lab community, but to break into the home market, they're gonna need to give us the ability to create VLANs. No serious home labber is going to run this in their home lab without that feature. I know they're not looking to compete with the likes of TP-Link, Ubiquiti, Netgear, all those big dogs, which is fine, but I do think a few tweaks can take them a long way. I really like what they're doing over there and want to see GLINet keep improving both their hardware and software, so I'll definitely be sticking around to try out future versions. What do you think? Agree? Disagree? Let me know down in the comments. But that's all I have for this one. If you liked it, then drop a like and subscribe if you want to see more networking stuff. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my travel router that's also a home router that definitely supports VLANs. Y'all are secure. And if you're still watching, you're a QR code. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.